All right, so today we're diving into a story, a story that's got everybody talking. And um, it's not the kind of buzz Diddy usually makes. We are talking about the allegations against Sean Diddy Cubs. Yeah. And these charges are, I mean, they're serious. They could completely change how we see him. Yeah. And, you know, you asked for the full story, and that's what we're going to give you. We're breaking down everything, the headlines, the whispers, what this means for Diddy, but also, and this is important, how this touches a lot of other big names. And I have to be honest, like, when this all first broke, I thought, okay, another celebrity, another slap on the wrist. This feels different. It is different. These aren't like, oh, he was a little too handsy at a party accusations. Yeah. We're talking racketeering. Right. We're talking sex trafficking. These are words you don't expect next to the name of someone getting keys to cities. You know, this is a whole other level. And it's got layers, man, layers that go way back. No, absolutely. It really <laughs> makes you think about the ditty we thought we knew. Hmm. Like the music, the, the fashion. Right. The Ciroc. The branding, the success. Yeah. And it just makes it that much more... I don't know, interesting, because it makes you question everything you think you know about people like that, about power, especially in music entertainment, those worlds. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we have to talk about these freak off parties, because that's what a lot of the coverage at the beginning, that's what everyone was talking about. But reading through everything, seeing thousands of bottles of baby oil, yeah. lubricants being taken out as evidence. I mean, it's weird, right? It's not a good look. Yeah. And it's really important to look past the headlines, the shock value. What do these details potentially mean legally, right? Because if true, this isn't just some wild party. This is a pattern. And it points to something a lot darker, coercion, exploitation. A system almost. A system, exactly. And these lawsuits that blew this whole thing open, they suggest it wasn't just Diddy. There were other people. Maybe some didn't know the full extent, but others. Involved in some way. Involved, yeah. And a lot of this, if I'm remembering correctly, this all starts with Cassie Ventura. Diddy's ex. Mm-hmm. Her lawsuit. hundred percent. Cassie's lawsuit, which, by the way, filed under the New York Survivor Act, that was huge. Now, this act, for those who don't know, it lets survivors, even if it happened years ago, they can still sue, mm -hmm. gets around the usual time limits. That was big for her, and it opened the door for others. You know, I'd never even heard of that act before, this whole thing. Yeah, it's relatively new, but it's there to give a voice to those who are silenced. You know? Trauma, fear, right. whatever it might be. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. And so Cassie's case and then a few others come out and you start seeing these really heavy accusations, mm -hmm. physical abuse, being pressured into sex, all of it. Yeah. And it's one thing to hear rumors, but these lawsuits, they lay it out. And the fact that multiple people are saying similar things about Diddy's behavior, that's hard to ignore. A pattern, not just isolated stuff. And legally, if it's proven, that's... That's huge. You know, one thing that really stuck with me reading through all this was the allegation that Diddy had these parties filmed, like actual recordings. Oh, yeah. If that's true, legally, that's fake. Potentially a game changer. I mean, think about it. If the authorities get their hands on footage and it shows, say, drug use or even worse, you know, something that backs up these claims of assault, coercion. That's it. Game over. Pretty much. That kind of evidence is hard to argue with. And it wasn't just Cassie, right? Others came forward with similar stories. Exactly. We had Lil Rod, a music producer. He filed his own lawsuit, and it echoed a lot of what Cassie was alleging. Physical abuse, pressure to engage in sexual acts, the whole nine yards. So this wasn't just hearsay or gossip. These were serious legal documents. Serious and detailed. Multiple people painting a very similar picture of what was going on. And that's where I think this whole web of connections gets really wild. Because it's not just Diddy's inner circle. We're talking huge names. Yeah. A-listers. It's true. Now, remember, just because someone's named in a lawsuit, it doesn't automatically mean they're guilty. Right, of course. But it raises questions. Big ones. No doubt. And for the listener, some of these names are massive. Like Lil Rod's lawsuit, it mentions Cuba Gooding Jr., right? Yeah. And the allegation is that Diddy was like grooming him to meet Gooding Jr. And then Gooding Jr. allegedly groped him on Diddy's yacht. And that detail is particularly interesting because, you know, Gooding Jr., he's been accused of sexual misconduct before multiple women. So even though those were separate incidents, this new accusation, it makes you wonder if there's a pattern of behavior there. It's like, are we seeing a bigger picture here? Potentially. And then you've got Jennifer Lopez, Diddy's ex. Right. And there's this allegation that she was present at a nightclub shooting back in 99 with Diddy. Yeah, and you might think, okay, what does that have to do with anything? 
But think about Cassie. In her lawsuit, she claimed Diddy made her carry a gun for him multiple times. Whoa, okay. And put those two things together. So now you have this incident with J-Lo, alleged involvement in a shooting. And it makes you wonder if there's a history here of Diddy putting women in risky, potentially dangerous situations. Wow. It's like every detail just adds another layer to this whole thing. Exactly. And then Prince Harry. Yeah, that one threw me for a loop, not gonna lie. Right, like what's he doing in this story? It's definitely a head scratcher. Now let's be clear, just going to Diddy's parties, that doesn't mean Harry was involved in anything illegal. No, of course not, but still. But it does make you wonder, who else was at these gatherings? What did they see? Was anyone turning a blind eye to what was happening? Because someone must have known something, right? That's the million dollar question, and that's what investigators will want to know. Who knew what and when did they know it? This is where things could get really dicey, legally speaking. Yeah. If even one person starts talking. It could all come crashing down, like a house of cards. Exactly. And there's already been some movement on that front. Christina Corum, Diddy's chief of staff. Right. She was named in Lil Rod's lawsuit as Diddy's handler. Yeah, the allegations there are pretty serious that she was in charge of getting drugs, arranging travel, maybe even silencing people who might talk. I mean, for people who aren't familiar, that's some Gislaine Maxwell level stuff right yeah. there. The comparison is definitely there. If even half of what's being alleged about Quorum is true, then her role in all of this, it's crucial. And think about it, if investigators can get her to flip to cooperate, oh, man. that could blow the whole case wide open. We could be talking about even more evidence, maybe even other big names getting caught in the crossfire. Wow, so much writing on what happens next. What are we even looking at here, outcomes-wise? Well, there are a few possibilities. One, Diddy could try to strike a plea deal, avoid a trial, which, let's face it, would be a huge media circus. Oh, absolutely. But even with a plea deal, there's going to be some kind of consequence, some admission of guilt. Right, but what if he says, nope, I'm innocent, and fights this thing? Then we're talking full-blown trial. And this wouldn't be just any trial. This would be the kind of media frenzy you see once in a generation. The witnesses, the evidence, the accusations... It would be huge. I have to say, like, oh. even with all this talk about lawsuits and potential jail time, mm. the thing that really gets me is we're talking about real people here, you know? Absolutely. These are serious accusations. And we can't lose sight of that. At the center of all this, it's about the people who are allegedly hurt. The impact this had on their lives, it's heavy stuff. And to, like, even think about coming forward against someone like Diddy, all that money, all that power? It takes guts, man. It takes guts because there's a huge power imbalance in these situations. People mm -hmm. are scared, scared to speak up, scared of what could happen to them, their careers. And then there's the court of public opinion, you know? Yeah. Social media. Yeah. It's a lot. Makes you wonder how many other stories are out there just like this, but people are too afraid to say anything. And that's the question, right? Not just in Hollywood, not just music, but everywhere. How do we make it so people feel safe? safe to tell their truth, knowing they'll be heard, that people will believe them. Because this whole thing, this Diddy thing, it feels like it's part of something bigger, right? Like we're seeing this more and more. A hundred percent. We saw it with hashtag me too. We saw it with Epstein. These powerful figures using their power to take advantage of people. And it's not just one industry, it's everywhere. And it feels like more and more people are saying, enough. Exactly. There's this awareness now of the power dynamics of how these things happen. And people are demanding accountability, no matter who it is, no matter how rich or famous they might be. Yeah, things are changing. How these cases are handled, how the media talks about them, even just how people see them. There's been a shift. And that shift, that's everything. Because in the end, this isn't just about Diddy, right? This is about making the world a little safer, a little more just. Mm. A world where everyone's voice matters. Yeah. Where everyone feels seen and respected. Well said. It's been a lot unpacking all this. And I know our listeners are going to have a lot to think about. Yeah. What's clear is this isn't just another celebrity scandal. This is something else, something bigger. This is about all of us. And as this case goes forward, who knows what will happen, but it's going to make us all examine things, power, privilege, how we treat each other. So to everyone listening, keep asking questions, keep listening, and keep fighting for a world where this kind of behavior, it's just not okay, no matter who you are. Well